This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV, the Kia EV9, with available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults, with zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute and available lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. A science story, huh? Is NYU a scientist? They, I it felt, felt I right. Right. But I was so And I just thought, well... I figured it out. It was that golden moment. Because science was on my side. Hi everyone, I'm Ben Lilly, and welcome to the Story Collider, where we bring you true personal stories about science. This week's story is from Marjorie Winther. The story was produced with First Person Arts and was recorded in May 2014 at the Fells Planetarium in the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, as part of the Philadelphia Science Festival. So yeah, I used to be a teacher, a science teacher. My first year teaching, I accidentally set a little boy on fire. <laughs> and you're clapping for that. We could be friends. Yeah, like what happened was I was teaching at the Anime Bullock Middle School on the south side of Chicago. And I wanted to be like Ellen. I wanted to surprise inspire people. I wanted to be that kind of teacher. I wanted the kids to be inspired and I, I was fresh out of college so I had all the best theories about teaching and I knew that the kids had to be, it had to be hands on and they had to be engaged so like we made a clock out of a potato and, and, and a tornado in a jar and you know the, the, the problem was like by the third week I had run out of ideas, and the kids were still there. <laughs> so I told them they were the gifted class, and they were supposed to design their own activities. <laughs> and I gave them my copy of Mr. Wizard's Science Secrets. Now, so the kids decided to make a spontaneous combustion chamber. And well, yeah, it was like a model of one. It, it, Anyway, what, what, what was supposed to happen, you were supposed to have like a, a, a container with a tight seal, like a, like a paint can, and, and a, you, you poke a hole, and you have a rubber hose, and you put a funnel in the can and flour and a candle. You're supposed to light the, the candle, put the lid on, and then blow through, blow through the hose, and then, you know, the, the flour ignites in it, pressure builds up, and the lid pops off, and it's noisy and exciting but here's the thing this was like public education in the 80s so we didn't have all the right equipment we had like instead of the paint can we had like a coffee can and instead of the rubber hose we had a bendy straw <laughs> and we had the candle and the flower but we we didn't really have a nice tight seal for the can we had like tin foil and and so, so you know they lit the candle and and and, and the kid, this kid, Robert Mitchell, was going to come. But now remember the 80s. Can I refresh your memory? And some of you weren't even there. Do you remember what was happening with hair in, in, in the 80s? Like, like if you were white, like you kind of like, like sprayed it so it went straight up like Bananarama. Do you remember the, this? And, and if you were black, you like relaxed it in these like, drippy little ringlets like Michael Jackson in the Thriller album. So my point is, people were flammable. <laughs> so little Robert Mitchell, you know, comes up and lights the candle and puts the tin foil on the coffee can and blows through the bendy straw. But instead of the lid popping off with a lot of drama, a lick of flame, like, shot out, and little Robert Mitchell went up like a torch. And I was kind of panicking, and I went, and I started, like, smashing out the, the flame. It's a very low-temperature flame, it, it turns out. Like, I, I looked it up. The flash point of Jerry Curl solution is, like, 58 degrees, you know? 
Like, it's a wonder people weren't just bursting into flames on crisp October mornings. But, you know, and so, so I, I put it out. The other kids, you know, showed, showed concern for their classmate by rolling on the floor laughing. Like, not just typing ROFL like in a chat room. Like, they were literally rolling. In. And, and you might think I got in trouble. Like, there would be some consequences, but there were not. <laughs> because the kids didn't tell anybody because they all wanted to do it again. <laughs> so let me prepare you um, because the second fire of my first year teaching <laughs> was a little more serious. And what happened was the principal, uh, I got called into the principal's office be, and she asked me, would I take the seventh graders on a week long field trip to an archaeological dig site in southern Illinois. Because by this time, she had heard they were the gifted class. And I said, yeah, well, I'll do it. And you know, so like bake sales, car wash, candy, you know, finally, you know, we got the money. And me and 15 seventh graders start heading down the state to southern Illinois. Now, you guys are from Philly. You don't understand Illinois. Southern. Illinois is more southern than Illinois. You know, it's, it's closer geographically and culturally, it's closer to Mississippi than it is to Chicago. And here we go, this archeological center was in this little town called Campsville, which was 328 white people in, in southern Illinois. And, and I show up and, and the, the archeological center put us up in this little like cabin on the edge of town. And, you know, it was the boys upstairs, girls downstairs. I was, like, trying to chaperone this, this John. And, you know, everybody's, <laughs> everybody's having a good time until morning. We wake up and open the door, and someone had burned a cross on our lawn. Yeah, it's all fun and games until someone burns a cross. So we, the kids were too scared to leave the cabin. There were no cell phones in the 80s. I, we just kind of waited there until one of the archaeologists came to see where were we, and, and, and he saw what had happened, and then the mayor of the town came over to talk to us. The mayor, he looked like Rod Steiger in, in the heat of the night. Do you remember that sort of red-faced, jowly guy? And, and he's like, yeah, I think it was just a prank. And I'm like, prank, hate crime, you know. It's a fine line, and... You know, he said, well, we're going to do an investigation. I was like, dude, there's 328 people in the town. Can't you just ask around? Put it in the church bulletin? Like, I don't think you need to call in Mr. Tibbs, you know. And, but we, you know, we all, we all went, went down. Literary guy, yeah. Um, we, we all went down to the, the archaeological center was in the center of town. But, but the kids were jumpy. You know, we were supposed to be doing archaeology and nature and Remember, these are seventh graders. Most of them had never been out of the city before, never been away from home before, never spent the night away from home. They were, they were scared, and, and they were jumpy, and, and we were supposed to do all this like, cool stuff, but they were like, every time they heard a noise, they would like, come kind of huddle next to me, and they did a lot of, ah, and they screamed, and you know, somebody steps on a twig, and everybody runs over to me, and I was like, okay, I get it. That's a pretty powerful symbol, and it's a threatening terrorist act. And I'm not going to put up with this. I'm not. We're not going to ruin this, this trip by this nonsense. So, you know, we went back that evening to, to the little cabin, and, and I'm trying to figure out what to do to get them through this. And, and I put them in a room, and I said, okay, who here is ready to rise above their fear? And I weighed it. And eventually, this one little girl, Melanie, raised her hand. And you know, if you know anything about seventh grade girls, you know, if Melanie raises her hand, well, then Tiffany's going to raise her hand, you know. And then the other little girls raised, and then the boys raised their hand, and everybody raised their hand. And I said, well, good. Let's go into the center of town and, and, and have some dinner. And, and the town just had one main street everybody lived on. And, and so we start walking through the town. And it started to drizzle. And this little girl, Melanie, started singing this song that you may know from the um, old movie. Uh, when you walk through a storm, keep your head 
up high. And all the kids knew that song because they'd done it in an assembly the previous year. And so they all joined in. And they're singing. They're walking to this town. And the people in the town started coming out of their houses as the kids are, are walking in. And they started to clap. And I was so proud of those kids. And I realized I had gone into teaching because I wanted to inspire them. They inspired me. Thank you. That was Marjorie Winther. Marjorie has been performing stories and comedy for over 10 years. She is the winner of the 2012 First Person Arts Grand Slam. Marjorie has been voted audience favorite at numerous First Person Arts Story Slams. She also performs stand-up comedy in clubs and at fundraisers and corporate and community events. When not performing, Marjorie designs and delivers corporate training programs and leads professional workshops. Before moving into the corporate world, she taught middle and high school science in the Chicago Public Schools. This story was produced with First Person Arts, Philadelphia's extraordinary personal storytelling organization. Find them at their podcast at firstpersonarts.org. It was also part of the Philadelphia Science Festival and produced by the Franklin Institute. Find them at fi.edu. For more science stories, take a look at storycollider.org, where we have archives of the podcast and upcoming events. Also, we depend on listeners like you for our support. If you love the podcast, please consider donating at storycollider.org slash donate. The Story Collider is produced by me, Brian Wecht, Aaron Barker, and Ari Daniel. The podcast is produced by Rose Avalith. Additional help from Brooke Williams, Lena Groger, and Justin D'Ambrosio. The theme music is by Ghost. Special thanks to the Franklin Institute for hosting the show, to the Philadelphia Science Festival and First Person Arts for being amazing partners, and to my science teachers for never setting me on fire. Thanks for listening. If you're a woman over 40 dealing with hot flashes, insomnia, brain fog, moodiness, or weight gain, you don't have to accept it as just another part of aging. The experts at Midi Health know all these symptoms can be connected to the hormonal changes of menopause. And Midi can help with safe, effective, FDA-approved solutions covered by insurance. 91% of Midi patients get relief from symptoms within just two months. Book your virtual visit today at joinmidi.com.